All right, so the book that we're gonna to read today is about an animal that sometimes doesn't have the nicest reputation, but they're so interesting, and often I think they're really pretty cute. This is about a bat, and this is the book Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. And I wanna give you a hint for reading this book. When you are listening, pay attention not just to the pictures on the main page, but also pay attention to the little pictures up at the top here because there's two different stories that are being told. So tiny picture and the big picture. All right, Stella Luna. In a warm and sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, Mother Bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out in search of food. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful birds swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down and down she went faster and faster into the forest below. The dark leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One, one twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched her thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down, again she dropped. Thump! Stella Luna landed headfirst into a soft, downy nest, startling three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the baby birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. I like how the nest has, has somebody's bracelet woven into it. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Remember, she's a, a fruit bat, so she eats fruit. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, opened her mouth, plop. In dropped a big green grasshopper. Ew. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept all night. She ate bugs even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing. Except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. You see all those birds hanging upside down? When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept all night in the nest and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. 
It was, I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on the branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same thing. Uh, how embarrassing. Did that work? Mm. <laughs> I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. Well, is she clumsy or just for a bird? Is she behaving like a bat? Not really. The next day, Pip, Flitter, and Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from their home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better go home or we will get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew until her wings ached. She dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. Does that look silly for a bat to hang like that? She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Who do you think is coming? Hey, a loud voice said. Why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down, you are, said Stella Luna. Ah, but you are a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs. So that makes you upside down, the creature said. I am a bat. I am hanging by my feet. So that makes me right side up. Still, Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all muttered. Wait, wait, let me look at this child, a bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked, sniffing Stella Luna's fur. She whispered, you are Stella Luna. You are my baby. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat, as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me, and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we'll crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon, the bats found a mango tree, and Stella Luna ate as much fruit as she could hold. Mm, does that mango look good? I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, she said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. Uh-oh, the birds are going to be able to do that? When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leaped from the tree to follow her. 
I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled, howled Flitter. Aye, shrieked Flap. They're going to, gra they're going to crash, crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped the branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna, and then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we feel so different? How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flip, Flitter. How can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna. But we're friends, and that's a fact. All right. And then there's a page of bat notes that's also really interesting. But I'm ending the story there. All right. So we learned some really interesting things about what birds like and what bats like. But more, what was the big message from this story? It was that even though they are different, they can still be friends and they have a lot of things in common. So I hope that you take from that, that even if you have things that are different from your friends, that the friendship is what is most important. All right, we'll be back again with more books.